Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into the programmable input-output features of the RP2040. Recently, I've gotten some questions about whether we can use the Arduino IDE to program the Raspberry Pi Pico PIO. I wasn't really sure, so I did a little digging. So why don't you join me as we explore whether the Arduino IDE can be used to program the PIO features of the RP2040. Originally, the RP2040 was issued with two different programming environments, MicroPython and its variants, and the C, C++ SDK. Both of these environments supported the programmable input-output features of the RP2040. For MicroPython, the PIO code is located within the main MicroPython program. And for the C, C++ SDK, the PIO code is in a separate companion file. A third programming environment arrived in the spring of 2021 when Arduino added the RP2040 core to its very familiar IDE. A huge advantage is that there are countless sketches that have been written for Arduinos that can now be used for the RP2040 with only minor modifications. However, adding PIO capabilities is a work in progress. Let's give it a try. First, I'll make sure that I have the latest version of the Arduino IDE installed, which is 1.8.19 as of the date of this video. I uninstalled my old version and installed the most recent version using the Windows installer. I avoided using the Windows app since several websites noted that using the RP2040 with that version was a little flaky. When we open the IDE, we find that the RP2040 isn't one of the boards that's supported right out of the gate. We have to add an RP2040 core from Earl Philhauer. I'll put a link in the description below. Copy the link and paste it into the Additional Boards Manager URLs box under Files Preferences. Then click OK. Now go into Tools. Under Board, click the Boards Manager. A selection box comes up. Type Pico into the search box and you should see the Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040 Core by Earl Philhauer. Click the Install button and after a minute or so, the core should be installed. Close out the IDE and reopen it. Click on Tools and Board, and the RP2040 should be visible. I clicked on the Raspberry Pi Pico since that's the board I'm using, however there are quite a few other boards available. Now let's try running a sketch. I'll choose the RP2040 Fade Sketch. Before I click the Upload button, I hold down the Boot Select button of the Pico and plug in the USB connector. Then I'll click on the Upload button. After a few moments, the sketch will upload and the onboard LED will begin fading up and down. Now let's try an Arduino supplied sketch. I'll choose Blink from the Arduino examples. After uploading the sketch, the Pico begins blinking. Note that both of the previous sketches use the standard functions of the RP2040 but don't use the PIO. Let's try a simple project, Hello, that uses PIO to blink an LED. This is an Arduino variation of the Hello PIO program provided by Raspberry Pi in their Pico examples download for the C, C++ SDK. There are two parts to the program, the main sketch and the PIO program. I'll put a link in the description to my GitHub page where you can get both parts. I'll start first with the C part, since that will create the file structure that we'll use for developing this program. 
Open the Arduino IDE and select New Sketch. After deleting everything in the new sketch window, copy over the main sketch from my linked GitHub file into the blank IDE window. Then save that file and note the path since we'll be saving our PIO program there also. Let's get the PIO program now. Copy the PIO program from the linked GitHub file and paste it into any text editor. I happen to use Notepad++. Then save the file as hello.pio in the same folder that the Arduino IDE created for the main sketch. Now we have both parts of our hello program in the same directory. However, the Arduino IDE doesn't use the PIO program as is. A header file must be created first by using a specially compiled version of PIOASM.exe. Until recently, you had to compile PIOASM yourself, which is almost as complicated as letting the C, C++ SDK do the entire compiling and building of the PIO program. However, within the past few days, as of the end of February 2022, Earl Philhauer has included a compiled version of PIOASM in his installation package. You can get to it by going to the Arduino IDE File Preferences and clicking on the link to the Additional Preferences. This will take you to the Installation folder. Search for PIOASM and it should show up deep under the Packages slash RP2040 directory. Copy the PIOASM.exe file into the same folder as the PIO program in the main sketch. In the command prompt, navigate to the location of the PIO file and PIOASM.exe file and type the following command. PIOASM.exe space hello.pio space hello.pio.h This will generate the header file that the Arduino IDE will use to build the UF2 file for the Pico. Okay, now that we have all the parts in one place, let's try it out. While the Pico is still attached to the computer, click on the Upload button, and after a little while, you should see the internal LED on the Pico blink. Now that it's working, let's go through the programs to point out the differences. First, we'll look at the PIO program. It's exactly the same as we would write for the C, C++ version, the same structure and the same syntax. For more info, check out my video using the PIO with the C, C++ SDK. I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner. In this case, after we name the program, we simply pull a word from the transmit FIFO. I'll put the least significant bit to the out pin group and then loop back to the beginning. The initialization is very straightforward. First, we set up our helper function and then grab the default configuration. Next, we map the output pin group to one pin specified as pin. Then we connect the GPIO associated with that pin to the PIO. Now we'll set the pin direction as an output, load our configuration, and start the state machine running. The main program follows the Arduino structure of using a setup function and a loop function. Let's take a closer look. Before the setup function, we'll first include the PIO library and the PIO header file we just created. Then I'll set the PIO block to zero and define the global variables. 
Then in the setup function, I'll add the PIO program to the PIO block zero program memory, claim a state machine, and instantiate the state machine using the helper function. In the loop function, we'll send a one to the transmit FIFO, which will turn on the LED, and then sleep for five seconds. Next, we'll send a zero to the transmit FIFO, turning off the LED, and then sleep for another five seconds. Then we loop back to the beginning and do it all over again. I found that the standard Arduino setup and loop function structure results in a fairly stable operation by the Arduino IDE. I tried using the Raspberry Pi version of Hello PIO, which doesn't fit the Arduino standard, and found that the program will run once. However, it blows up the interface between the Pico and the Arduino IDE, disabling the IDE. I was dead in the water until I discovered a workaround where I load MicroPython into the Pico to realign the communications ports. I've also tried running my VGA video program from the Arduino IDE. No joy there, and again, it blew up the interface. I don't know if using the interrupts and callbacks caused the issues, but I didn't feel like trying to debug the program. Thanks for joining me today. We looked into using the Arduino IDE to run PIO programs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. It does work, but it's a work in progress. I have to say that I'm not a fan. I don't want to trade the flexibility of programming in C for a more friendly user interface, but don't take my word, I like programming in machine language too. I think that the IDE is useful for someone who is experienced with the Arduino and wants to lower the learning curve to try the Pico. The IDE is good for simpler Pico projects, however, if you want to do more complicated projects in the future, I would suggest that you take the time and effort to learn the C, C++ SDK. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon. Thank you.